Hello and welcome, my name is Meeples, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are looking at The Black Panther Party, a graphic novel history by David F. Walker and Marcus Kwame Anderson, published by 10 Speed Press in 2021. Content notes for guns, enslavement, racist violence, and murder. This comic is part of my Black Comics TBR, so I will also direct you to the Black YouTube channel. To a Black YouTube channel, this time we are looking at Afro Marcus. Marxist, an archive channel that posts interviews and speeches by historic Black activists like Angela Davis, Atala Shabazz, and Mumia Abu-Jamal, among others. Flipping over to the back flap, let's just take a look at the creator bios. Quote, David F. Walker is an award-winning comic book writer, filmmaker, journalist, and educator. His writing career started in the 1990s with the self-published zine Badass Mofo. In 1997, he produced and directed Macked, Hammered, Slaughtered, and Shafted, a feature-length documentary on the history of black exploitation films. Walker is best known for his work in graphic novels and comics, which includes The Life of Frederick Douglass, the Eisner Award-winning series Bitterroot, and the critically acclaimed series Naomi. He has written for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Dynamite Entertainment, and Dark Horse. He teaches part-time at Portland State University. End quote. And, quote, Marcus Kwame Anderson is an illustrator, fine artist, and teacher. Much of his work explores the beauty and diversity of the African diaspora. He graduated from State University of New York at Fredonia with a degree in illustration. Anderson is the co-creator of the comic book series Snow Days and has illustrated stories in Action Lab series Cash and Carry and Force. He has many stories left to tell. End quote. What kinds of keywords came to mind reading this book? Armed resistance, black self-determination, American history, nonfiction, Marxist revolution, and assassination. The Goodreads description is, quote, a bold and fascinating graphic novel history of the revolutionary Black Panther Party from an award-winning comic book writer. Founded in Oakland, California in 1966, the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense was a revolutionary political organization that stood in defiant contrast to the mainstream civil rights movement. This gripping illustrated history explores the impact and legacy of the Panthers from their social, educational, and healthcare programs that were designed to uplift the black community to their battle against police brutality through citizen patrols and frequent clashes with the FBI, which targeted the party from its outset. Using dramatic comic book style retelling and illustrated profiles of key figures, the Black Panther Party captures the major events, people, and actions of the party, as well as their cultural and political influence and enduring significance. Another one of those nonfiction books that uses pictures and limited dialogue to great effect, the text broken up into very digestible chunks, I had no struggle with staying engaged. Preaching a bit to the converted, in my case, it's really great to see such an eye-catching and easy-to-read book about such a deliberately misrepresented organization. There have also been a lot of revelations in the past decade as to the full extent of government infiltration and violent sabotage, to say the least. So, a very good time for such an excellent graphic history to be published. As far as gender went, the binary is pretty strong with this one. A bit male-heavy, I felt like it represented women more equally than some other histories of activism I have read previously. It just didn't push the envelope. That said, I did appreciate just how many people are profiled in this book. There was definitely a hierarchy of leadership, which isn't my favorite thing as an anarchist, but Walker didn't just pick one or two people to hold up as basically celebrities. Non-heterosexuality did not really come up in the book. Some basic web searching, just beyond all the headlines about how gay romance was cut from the Black Panther movie, does point to a number of positive intersections of gay liberation in the Black Panther's IRL, which is always good to hear. He heterosexuality was obviously heavily present throughout. Race is clearly central to the Black Panther experience and narrative. There's also some coverage of other racial groups that were inspired to form around the globe by the Black Panthers, as well as other kinds of international solidarity and inspiration. Class conditions, obviously closely tied to the understanding of race in so-called America, was fairly central to the Black Panthers' activities. 
It did not feel like a focus of the narrative of the book. And disability wasn't really brought up at all. To conclude, I do think this is a very excellent read that is generally recommendable. Five out of five stars. Bye y'all, keep reading and organize to end capital oppression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.